Okay, Zay Flowers is next. This is against the Detroit Lions, uh, a season-high 78 yards this past weekend. Yeah, so this is another bold stance right here with Zay Flowers. I haven't even ranked him nearly as high as this one. He's been the wide receiver 17 in usage over the last month. The Lions secondary might be without three key starters, including a safety, their cornerback one, and then a slot corner as well um, in Brian Branch. Um, pick and lobby at 56 and a half yards, puts them right into this tier. And I just think that this is a potential shootout game. The team totals aren't very high in this game. I wonder if both these offenses are just too good and the Ravens could start really ironing this thing out now that they have an offensive line back and some of these drops will even out. And then all of a sudden Lamar's numbers will look really, really strong. JSN wide receiver 35. Um, move them up more. Yeah, move them, move them ahead of Cortland Sutton. Wow. Love it. I mean, we discussed the usage on Stats versus Film. Hopefully, all of you tune into that show. Uh, they called a leak play for him. It should have been a touchdown. Uh, it was, I, I didn't say this enough. It's so important coming out of a bye that their objective was to get actual wide receiver usage for JSN, not just short stuff, not just low A dot. It was legit wide receiver stuff. And again, that was obviously a mission that they had during this period. And I think it's very mm. lucky for us that JSN had this early buy. And that also comes on the heels of wearing a whisper wrist brace due to a scaphoid injury or what we think it was. So despite the lower production watching the game, I'm much more optimistic about JSN now. And I think in many leagues out there, he's probably dropped. Mm -hmm. I would be a firm stash on him the rest of the way. Yeah, I would pick him up, especially with both of the receivers dealing with some type of injury here. And like, to me, this is just once we get into this territory, like we're hoping for like four catches for 40 yards. And at least one of these guys has like legitimately start level talent. And that is JSN in theory. So this is the time to just like close your eyes, play the post by rookie bump game. With JSN, we saw it in flashes. It wasn't like perfect usage. Like he only had like six expected fantasy points last week, but that turn down really would have changed things. Yes. If uh, our pers our perspective would be completely different if Gino does make that play, and we'll see if Tyre Lockett that hamstring injury actually plays through. And we're projecting a Gino Smith bounce back this week, where he hasn't had a single game I think this year of two plus touchdown passes, yeah. and they're in a great spot. They're in a great spot. Um. I will add again, Mike Bobo is playing like five red zone snaps and JSN is like 11 of those this past game. So it's, it's interesting. Like they love Bobo in their short yarded situations. Um, let me check the, I know Bobo was dealing with some type of Ooh, that injury. would open it up even more. Yeah. He, he had a, a difficult catch or two that he came down with some bumps and bruises. I bet. So. I'll, I'll note all that stuff in the um, underdog network, by the way, people always complain that we don't spend enough time on these guys. I have notes, charts, matchup notes injury notes so much on these players we just don't have time to talk about every single player as long as we'd want to so make sure to go update i'll, I'll be updating my column go to underdog network and actually read it for some reason we talk about every single week the fantasy community was wanting so badly cow pits to break out and now that he has and played well consistently for the last few weeks they still rank him in consensus rankings as a tight end nine, and here you have wow. it as a tight end six at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, as a team, they're the tight end one in usage over the last month by a large mile. Just they're also using Jonathan Smith, uh, of course. But uh, over the last month, he's been the tight end three in usage. He's had at least 8.8 .8 expected half PPR points in four of the last five games. And we always talk about Tampa Bay. They're better at stopping the run than they are stopping the pass. So teams often throw the ball more against Tampa. Um, and I'm more or less thinking of Kyle Pitts as kind of a wide receiver, deep, deep threat wide receiver, volatile, but he's got a path. Thinking about him as like the Deshaun Jackson of tight ends. And I think this is a good spot to 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 dial him up just because this is a pass funnel. Yeah. I mean, Tampa Bay is playing on at home for the second straight week. I don't think Desmond Ritter is going to play as well as Jared Goff did last week. And I think that a lot of what, again, the exotic stuff that Todd Bowles throws out there in third downs will confuse Desmond Ritter more so than they did with Ben Johnson and Jared Goff. But still, I mean, we're not getting the easy button stuff with Kyle Pitts. That is all going to Jonu Smith, but at least we're getting seven more pass attempts this year yep. 
with Desmond Ritter than what we got last year. Okay, Matthew Stafford is your quarterback seven. Um, this also goes against what he has done recently in terms of fancy points as he has been the quarterback 16, the quarterback 14, and the quarterback 15. And while I love this beautiful game that we play, it also drives me crazy because Matthew Stafford has been much better in real life than the quarterback 14. In the yes, certainly has. And then he gets even better when Cooper Cup's on the field. According to Sports Info Solutions, his EPA per attempt goes from uh, 0.12 to 0.25 per attempt. And this week, they're at least their top two uh, running backs are injured. So I wouldn't be surprised if at home they just say, here, Matthew Stafford, throw the ball 45 times and let you figure this thing out. And I think they will have success against the Steelers. Uh, by the way, the Steelers secondary early in the year was absolutely brutal. They're starting to play Joey Porter more, who was like a first round caliber rookie corner. I'm curious to see if they're after after the bye if he's going to be in the starting lineup uh yeah. either way i don't think that that's something that's going to limit matthew stafford but i do think that would help the Steelers defense uh to some degree and just going back to it their team total that 23 and a half which is not a lot but there just isn't many teams projected for that many points this week just scoring in general is way down deontay foreman is your running back 21 uh, is this another wait and see re approach because yeah. roshan johnson uh is still in concussion, concussion protocol at the time of this recording. Yeah, I think it was actually a DNP with that concussion, which is another week. So it's starting to linger longer. So uh, paying attention to that, this is assuming that he's not going to be out there. Uh, Darrington Evans was playing the passing downs, but it was Deonta uh, as the early down guy. He'll get the goal line opportunities if they do get down there. The Bears obviously projected for only 17 points against the Raiders. Not a great spot for Deontay Foreman, but he did at least have 10.8 expected half PPR points. So just, I think he's going to be out there. And at that point, he's, he's in the mix. <laughs>